What really caused the sudden blackout in Spain? Was it a cyber attack that causes fluctuations in the electricity supply? An overload from too much renewable energy that the grid could not accommodate? Or maybe the weakness lies in Europe's deeply interconnected power grid? In today's video, we're diving into the mystery behind Spain's unexpected power outage and why it didn't just stop at the border. We'll explore the chain reaction that led to the blackout, the role of France, and how a single trip in the grid sent shockwaves through multiple countries. From the promise and risks of renewables to the challenges of cross-border electricity sharing, we're breaking it all down. Now, what if one glitch could shut down an entire country? What if you couldn't call for help, couldn't leave the airport, couldn't even charge your phone? On April 28th, 2025, Spain didn't imagine it, they lived it. And what happened might just be a preview of the next global energy crisis. Stay with me, because what caused this blackout could affect every country on Earth. Imagine it's just past noon on a regular Monday. You're checking your phone, cooking lunch, maybe rushing to catch a train. Suddenly, everything shuts off. The lights, the internet, the trains, even the airport screens go blank. On April 28th, 2025, this wasn't a scene from a disaster movie. It was real life in Spain. And it turned into the most widespread blackout the country has seen in decades. It started at 12.33 p.m. local time. Within minutes, Spain's national electricity output dropped from 32 gigawatts to just 14. That's more than half the country's power, gone. The blackout swept across major cities like Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, Seville, and Zaragoza. But this wasn't just a Spanish problem. Portugal was hit too. Even parts of France and Andorra felt the shock waves. Madrid's metro train screeched to a halt. Passengers were evacuated through dark tunnels. At Barajas Airport, flights were grounded, baggage systems froze, and panic spread through terminals. Hospitals switched to emergency generators, some successfully, some not. Schools closed early. Traffic lights failed. The country paused in confusion. At least seven people died most due to tragic fires from candles or improper generator use. Another 25 were seriously injured, burns, smoke inhalation, even carbon monoxide poisoning. With mobile networks overwhelmed, many couldn't even call for help. This blackout didn't just turn off the lights. It endangered lives. Experts estimate the economic damage at 1.6 billion. Factories idled. Shops couldn't process payments. Deliveries stalled. Thousands of businesses, especially small ones, lost an entire day's revenue. For many families, that meant no income at all. The Spanish government quickly declared a state of emergency. Over 30,000 officers were sent out to manage roads, restore order, and support emergency services. Meanwhile, hospitals, city halls, and disaster teams scrambled to keep basic systems functioning. For a few hours, it felt like the country was holding its breath. So what actually caused this? Not hackers, not sabotage. According to Spain's grid operator, a massive power oscillation set off a cascading failure across the national grid. One frequency imbalance triggered a protective shutdown. Then another, and another. Within minutes, large parts of the country went black. Think of it like a row of dominoes. One tips, and the whole system follows. Some critics were quick to blame solar and wind power. After all, they fluctuate with the weather, right? But Spain's environment minister pushed back hard. She said the energy mix that day was balanced, renewables, hydro, nuclear, and more. The problem wasn't clean energy. It was that the grid wasn't ready for the fast-moving dynamics of modern, renewable-heavy systems. According to experts, small voltage fluctuations were starting around 9.30 a.m. local time. A Maryland-based company captured unusual data from its sensors. Instead of the usual steady voltage, the readings showed growing oscillations, both in frequency and strength, over the next three hours. Then, around noon, things escalated sharply. 
The sensors recorded voltage swinging up and down by about 15 volts every 1.5 seconds. The way that experts interpret this data is that the grid was clearly under stress. They noticed something wasn't right, and the signs of instability were only getting worse. The blackout revealed a deeper problem, infrastructure that stuck in the past. Europe's energy systems were built for big, centralized power plants, not solar panels on rooftops, battery farms, and AI-controlled demand shifts. The more we modernize how we generate energy, the more we need to modernize how we distribute and manage it. Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez demanded full transparency. Energy companies were slammed for their slow response and poor communication. But beneath the politics was a bigger question. Are we ready for the future of energy? If our grids can't keep up, this blackout might be just the beginning. So why was France partially affected? Well, Europe's electric grid is highly interconnected, which means countries can share electricity across borders. This setup makes the system more resilient overall, but it also comes with a downside. When there's a major disruption, like a transmission failure or a sudden shift in frequency, it can trigger automatic protective shutdowns across several countries. According to energy experts, that's exactly what can happen in a tightly linked grid. In this case, Spain and Portugal are connected to the main European grid through France. When there was a sudden drop in power, the interconnector between Spain and France tripped and that ripple effect extended into parts of France. This wasn't just a Spanish failure. It was a global warning saying, from California to Germany to India, every country pushing toward renewables faces the same challenge. How do you keep the lights on when the old rules Bye. no longer apply? Spain's blackout was terrifying, but maybe it was also necessary. It exposed the fragility of our energy systems, yes. But it also gave us a choice, patch things up or build something better. Because next time, it might not just be Spain. It might be your country, your city, your home. And the lights might not come back so quickly. Now let me ask you, do you think your country's power grid could survive a shock like this? Should we be investing more in grid resilience instead of just clean generation? What's the right balance between renewable energy and reliability? Let's open this up. Drop your thoughts in the comments. I read every one. And if you found this video eye-opening, hit the like button so more people see it. Subscribe if you want to stay informed on how tech, climate, and infrastructure shape our future. And don't forget to turn on notifications because we'll be covering more of these critical stories from around the world. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay powered, and I'll see you in the next one.